Hey everyone, I'm here with Kirby. Hi. So, uh, Kirby is going to be leading the charge uh, and adminning this year's tournament, as I think I had mentioned in the previous video. Uh, and he's got, of course, the support of all of the game masters and admins on my channel, which we've got quite a few of now that are all, uh, or most of them have agreed to kind of chip in and help in one way or another with getting this big behemoth off the ground. So we were thinking uh, today we'd go through uh, some of the questions some of you might have uh, and some of the rules uh, for people that can't read because they'll all be posted in the uh, the game channels, but sometimes it's good uh, for uh, lazy slash non-visual people uh, to have something to listen to. <laughs> so um, we Kirby and I have been talking. we got a list of kind of bullet points to go through. Um, Anything you want to say before we, we start, Kirby? Um, nope. This has just been a long hashing out of various ideas and personalities and suggestions. So this is where we're at. Right. So uh, as per where we're at, specifically, we've had a tremendous number of people sign up. I think it was like uh, 24 hours. We had 144 people sign up. Yep, probably less than that, and probably more than those number of players, too. Yeah. So the situation right now is... Well, and we felt bad about that, right? Because a lot of people who weren't... You know, it, it always feels bad if uh, there's really good players who want to get in on the finals. They've maybe been waiting for it for a year, and they weren't around, or they were busy when the tournament got announced, and it already filled up. So uh, what we wanted to do was to have more people able to join. Um, the problem doing it is, ha like, how this tournament... The, the tournament doesn't scale up and down super easily. Like, if you were like, let's have a tournament where, you know, 200 people can be in it. It's like, that might work or it might not work very well for a lot of tournament formats. And if you're like, 250, what about 250? Well, what about 300? And, like... Because the, the thing is, is the number of how good a multiplayer game is, is going to depend a lot on how many people are in it. You know, like you can't just have like a 20 person multiplayer game and expect it to be the same as a 12 person. Um, yeah, it winds up being based on a number of things. Part of it is the no amount of time it takes to play a game. Uh, I think last year we did a nine player qualifiers and then the 16 player finals, which is as we all know, is getting really up there and how long it's been taking. But the other thing is, uh, as far as players per game, for Dominions and for uh, the Map Nuke, which is what we're going to be using, specifically the number of players winds up being more... Um, specific than just sort of like rounding around the edges you have to have either 12 or right. 16 or 9 it can't really be like about 11.5 or something like that right and and that's because you know when you're doing like a, a map nuke map it you're gonna have a grid right it lays start positions out in a grid so if you're you know you could do like for um for like a a 14 player map is really tricky to do because if you want to have an even grid, it would have to. The only thing you can divide it by is like two and seven, right? And then like a 13 player map is a prime number. Like 13 is a prime number. It has no divisors. So you can't have any grid like configuration. You can come up with things which are weird where it's like, you know, um, you have three players in the first row and then four in the second and then, you know, three in the next one and that will kind of work but and then three in the one after but yeah it's basically there's some num like some specific numbers that make for a lot better maps uh like 12 and 16 are both pretty good and then 14 13 is a complete no-go 14 and 15 are okay but they're not great the, the problem with 16, which is what we're doing for the finals, is it just makes for a really long game, as we can see from the finals. Like, it just... And you can't really lower the throne setting um, very much, because I think we had it on 8, which is 
a, a lot of times for a 16 player game you might even do nine like you could maybe put it on seven but yeah i don't know it it still is going to be a really long game with with 16 players so you're like balancing there's only certain numbers of games you can have and how many games we have in the qualifier round will impact how big the finals is because we have one person from each game passing on so it's like this this formula you have to figure out how many people are we going to have in the qualifier games and then how many games are we going to have total and that number of games we have is going to dictate how many players are in the final game and that's why like it's hard to just have like, oh, we're going to have like however many people sign up is how many games we're going to have. It actually, we can really only support a certain number. Yeah, and I think Map Nuke specifically also has, um, uh, the program has cutoffs that it uses as well. I mean, you can customize Map Nuke to do a lot of things, but All right, it's, cool. um, but yeah, I mean, and I mean, anyway, I think good Dominions games are also like 12 to 16. I feel like above that, like a lot of people don't want to play a 20 player game. It just, it starts getting everything gets <laughs> yeah. like the micro gets worse. A bit meme. Yeah. So, um, I mean, like the longest game I've ever played, I think was, it was like a 22 player game or a 21 player game. It was when I was middle age Atlantis. And it yeah. was just such a slog by the end. I mean, it was unbelievable. And you wouldn't think that it makes such a big difference, like being a 12th player or a 22 player. It makes like a world of difference. Well, so when your turns are getting to like two weeks long. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so um, anyway, for this uh, tournament, we have how many people are signed up right now, Kirby? We've got um, 192 minus 12. We need 12 more players. We need 12 more players to have 16 games, right? Right. And then, so that'll be 16 games of 12 players, and then it will be a 16-player final. Right. Okay. So that is the format. That's what we're going with. We, I know in the, the GM lounge, we've been going back and forth, discussing a lot of different options. Um, but But this is it. And the nice thing I think about doing this is the 12-player games will be reasonably quick. So the thing is we can't start the finals until the last of the 12-player games finishes. So right. if we had, like one thing we were thinking about to let even more people in is maybe we have like 16-player games in the qualifier round. Well, then the longest one of those, who knows how long it would last? You know, it could be like over a year. So... I, I think the last 12 player game will probably take like six to eight months to finish. Like it would be weird for a 12 player game to go longer than eight months it, it, unless there's somebody really abusing extensions, in which case we might have to replace them. Yeah. But, and we've got, we had um, one of the nine player <clears throat> qualifiers from last year's go quite a long time too, over a hundred turns, I think. Yeah. But they were playing fast, at least. So, it, you know, they were the last game to finish, but it wasn't that by that long. You know, we didn't have any super laggards. But, yeah, this year totally could be, like, you know... I, I wouldn't be horribly surprised if one game took a year. I hope it doesn't happen, but it wouldn't It wouldn't shock me. Um, but 12 players... I like 12-player games more than 9-player games. 9-player games are a little small, and last year we had... I think about half of the games ended in a throne rush, which is fine, but I don't know if it's like peak dominions when half of the games are ending in throne rushes. So Yeah, and uh, the thrones in, in particular in these games, because it's 12 players, there are going to be um, a few more thrones and there are going to be a few more thrones to right. win than last year. Right, so... Uh, we can talk about that. Yeah, so I think, w let's go through some of the specifics. So it's going to be, uh, where do we have it down here? So it's 12 player maps. It's going to be 192 provinces. Um, and we're doing, do we have the throne setting listed here? I think they're down here. So 12 level two thrones, six of those thrones to win. So. Yeah, and so if you remember where Map Nuke puts you and how it breaks the maps down is that you start with four corner thrones that you can easily reach, and then you've got 
um, four neighbors. And so then in theory, if you play a perfect game, you can get all four of your own thrones and then um, take one other player and get the two thrones that they have next to their cap that. Um, right. Yeah. But so that's if, like, if, that's like a perfect, perfect game. Yeah. So if you start here, yeah, with, with, when we were playing on a nine player map, like if these were all of your principal neighbors, you could, um, and you know, there's a throne in between, which I'll do with a little yellow circle here. It was really easy to throne rush. If you got all four of your thrones, all you had to do was get one other throne. So that means you just, like, if you win the first war, you're really well set up to throne rush. You don't really need to conquer the board at all. Um, so anyway, this is kind of what a, like, a nine-player map would look like. On a, with the current setting, which is 12 players and six thrones to win, you would have to conquer somebody, and they would, uh, the person you're conquering would have to like have both basically like a mat first of all you'd have to have all of your own thrones then you conquer somebody probably there's a very good chance that two other players are going to own these thrones so you'd have to pick a war with two other players in addition to you know having all of the thrones on this this flanking border if you were to attack this way yeah so, plus i think it's pretty easy to see that coming um, yeah for all the other players so yeah, even though it's only one throne more, I think it's gonna. I think we'll see a good. You can still throne rush, but I think we'll see less of it, um, which will be good. I think if maybe like twenty percent of the games end in throne rushes rather than fifty percent, that would be good. Um, so um, yeah, that's that. Uh, okay. So let's get into the ages that we're gonna be right. picking. So. Basically, people are going to get assigned to a game. That will happen, I think you said, today or tomorrow, right? Yeah, we can get that done. We can get the um, the f uh, channels created probably today or tomorrow and then um, move people in. And then once people are in, we'll roll um, the ages for each game. And that can be a good starting point. Okay. And then... Um... Yeah, and so, yeah, once people have that, when they find out what game they're in, they'll probably about the same time also figure out what age it is. So that'll be today or tomorrow. That'll help people be able to start um, testing uh, ideas for their pretenders and nations. Right. Um, as soon as they're in a game, they can start, we can start the banning, right? Because I don't think there's any... Um, and you'll be... Are, are people going to be put in the game in the order they're going to draft, too? Because I think the... The... We can hash that out in the um, with the rest of the game masters okay. um, and see what we decide. Okay, but um, as the player, you will know reasonably shortly uh, what your draft order is. So it may not be at the exact moment the game started. We'll let you guys know, but you'll know pretty soon. But the the banning doesn't really need a draft order. It, basically, people can just ban whenever. I think what did we say? It's three ban, three votes to ban a nation now because we have more players. Yeah, but last year it was nine players, so two votes to ban, and this year we're going to do three votes. Right. Um, so with twelve players, that's twelve divided by three. That means the maximum number of nations you can ban in any era is going to be uh, four. Right. Um. Yeah, so that's basically banning. So basically, once you get in a game, you can just immediately throw down your votes, say who you want to ban. Uh, once it gets three votes, then that nation's eliminated. Nobody can pick it. And then uh, after that, we'll start the drafting. So um, basically, you'll have a draft order, and when it's your turn, you just pick a nation. A anything else we need to say on that? No, that got that covered. Uh, except for what the finals will be. Oh, right. Yeah, the finals are only going to be early age or late age, because we've had two middle age finals, and it's time we mix that up, I think. As fun as that is, uh, right. I think it's time for some new blood. Time for some new blood. Yeah, it's kind of funny, because you can't ban all the cancer in middle age. Like, you just list all the cancer nations, and you're like, okay, we'll just ban all those. Yep, not possible. 
Well, what's really funny is even with four bands, you can't even ban all the water nations. Yeah. So makes for a good time. Um, all right. So for the map making, um, if you played in the tournament before, it's going to be basically the same. But there's, uh, if you haven't or you didn't really know, there's some kind of interesting things about it. Um, we'll be using Map Nuke first of all. And uh, it's going to be the normal set, like grid setting, where you've got 12 provinces per player. Um, and. Was it 12? It's about 12. Does it say. Is that how it works? 12 times 12? No. I think it's 12 times 16. I think it's 16 12 provinces. 12 times 16, yeah. Yeah, it's 16 provinces a player. I don't know why I have 12. Um. Anyhow, uh, yeah, so, but we're going to hand massage it so that if you're an underwater nation, you get 10 provinces net underwater. Otherwise, if you want to be bigger than 10 provinces, you have to hold some land, which I think is a decent balance of underwater cancer versus, um, not pun it, you know, some nations are like aquatic. So if you make this number too small, it really punishes them. Um, Unless there's more than one um, water in the game, in right. which case they're all sharing the pond. Right. Yeah, that's another good point, is the underwater nations are always going to be adjacent to each other. Uh, and we're not going to have like some setup where they're each their own little underwater island. Um, and then we do have some special terrain starts. And um, if you want them, you need to indicate that. Um, the game master, whoever's running your game, will ask. But um, if you want, each of these nations can have a special start. If you're not one of these nations and you want a special type of terrain for your start, then I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we went over all of this last year right. and um, like in great depth. And each of them has either specific nation uh, reasons for it or um, a lot of them are like summons, like like specific summons that um the nation gets yeah that changes the game if they can't get them easily right it like some nations may have like a slight preference for a certain type of terrain in general if it was like a slight preference then we didn't um we we wouldn't do it but if it was like they really need it, or they can make like a very strong argument for it, we did. But anyway, this is what we've come up with. It worked last year. There's not really a very good chance we're going to change it. So, And again, it is optional. If you don't want it, then just say so. Like we've got, I right. think, Abyssia on there because they have a cave income bonus for their forts. Um, but if you would rather start not in a cave as Abyssia, for example, then that's totally fine. Right. Um, because for example, like I think Abyssia is a good example because they have, uh, like a dark vision bonus where they get 50% dark vision as Abyssians. But if you're fighting versus things that have like perfect dark vision, then having a cave as your capital is actually a pretty big handicap. If people are going to roll up on your capital, um, you know, yeah. you're going to get a minus attack and defense penalty there. Plus I think movement restrictions going in and out and stuff like right. that. I mean, for Abyssia, your map move one anyway, but maybe some of your mages there, can't move there. out um, two provinces and they would have otherwise. So, yeah, if you don't want this, if you would prefer a generic plane start, um, that's what everybody else is going to have. And if you do want this, like if you do want this specific thing, if you do want a cave or whatever, that's going to be hard coded into the map. Um, and what that means is that everybody's going to know where they start, where you start. So... If, for example, like somebody logs into the map and they see there's, you know, a cave and there's only one cave nation like Zabalba on the map. If they want to go rush you because they've got a build they think is going to be really good against Zabalba, they can just take everything and start running at your cap. So it's a risk of having yeah, that a can be a downside start. too. Yeah. So. Um. Any anything else we need to say on the map creation? We've said it's ten underwater provinces special starts that probably covers it all i think we will have um game masters just uh so they'll generate them and then uh, we'll have them go through and specifically make sure 
Like if there's any janky connections or weirdnesses, just double check them before we put them out there for people. Yeah. And, you know, fair warning, you might not have the most perfectly balanced map. Like there's some randomness. And if the game master sees something extremely janky, you know, like a good example of a pretty janky thing that can sometimes happen in map nuke was like the border between Uruk and uh, end and the finals. There was like a river system that blocked most of the border um, so that you couldn't really go through except through a throne. Um, if I recall to like cross north to south from. Yeah. So that's a janky. That awkward, yeah. yeah. And if a game, you know, like if I had seen that or noticed how janky it was, I probably would have changed it before the game started. But w people aren't. I, I don't know. Don't expect the game master to go through and look at every single border territory and make sure they're not janky. So there's going to be a fair amount of randomness in the map still. Which is just going to be flavor and kind of stuff for people to deal with in the game. Yep. Um. Okay. So that is the map making. Uh, game rules. Oh, we probably should add uh, mods on here, too. Drop it beneath this. Yeah. Something else we can talk about. So, game rules. Uh, trades are binding, but any, yeah. Yeah, anything that involves diplomacy is not binding, even if the diplomacy involves trades, like items. It's pretty standard. Yeah. Uh, thrones, 12 thrones, six to win. Don't stale. Um, if you start staling a lot of times, we'll look for a replacement. Yeah, we'll have, we'll cover that a bit more in the yeah. etiquette section. Uh, default timer is going to be 24 hours, uh, until about turn 40. After that, uh, I think it will go to 36 and then 48 as people in the game see fit. Yeah, with the qualifiers specifically, um, we want people to recognize that the longer their game takes is going to push the finals back. With the finals, I think we sort of tried to push for something along these lines to be more strict than the, in order to get the finals moving toward a conclusion, especially since we hadn't decided um, up until recently that we were even going to have an overlap Um and I made sure and checked with all the other players that if they're available, um, they'll be able to play both the finals and these qualifiers. So we're good on that front. But as far as like the qualifiers, the longer that you try and get extensions for, uh, just be self-conscious that you are going to be um, sort of dragging it out for, for everyone else as well. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we don't want to do is be in the business. Like, in general, if you need an extension, you should get it. Um, and we'll talk about this more for the etiquette stuff. But if somebody's holding the game hostage by continuous extension requests, um, especially if we're, if it's not deep in the late game, you'll probably... Uh, th this sucks to do, because no, like none of the GMs want to come in here and be like, well, you need to be doing your turn. But you might have somebody come and talk to you and be like, can you please pick it up? And if you can't, then it may suck, but you may get involuntarily subbed out, which we, we haven't had to do. And I hope we don't ever have to do, but, uh, cause it's a really shitty thing, but don't, don't yeah, just police yourself. There are available subs right. who are ready and ready to go. And they are, they're good. There are good people in the sub list too. So right. I wouldn't worry about. And if you're um, if you're really struggling to do your turns, you can probably find somebody that will like co-captain with you, and they can. Oh yeah, yeah. You know. I was doing um, Hydra with uh, Toolbox for most of the mid and uh, early game right. for a while, and that's actually really nice because then you can have a guy who's just like, oh yeah, I'll send the turn in for you and do little tweaks and stuff. So yeah, that is totally fine if you want to try Hydraing with somebody. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll leave that to you to you, but like, I think it's it's totally fine if we get like a couple of other extra. No, help. I mean, we're not, if it's something we can't police easily, you know, it's not something that's usually great to make rules about. So, I mean, 
Uh, if you're right. going to sh- ask people for, I mean, you, you can ask for advice in Dominions in so many ways. You can go to a, one of the Discord channels and just say, here's a scenario. What would you do? You can have a coach. There's a bunch of coaching channels. You can go ask somebody in a private yeah. or private way what to do. You can ask a friend in DMs what to do. You can ask people in the game you're in that you're allied with what to do in your situation. You know, so there's no... You can go watch Lucid's videos. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so there's tons of ways to like figure out what to do and basically having a hot, having somebody play Hydra with you is fine. If you, if you want that. Um, so, uh, one of the changes we made this year for game rules was, uh, non-random research. It's pretty nitpicky change, but, uh, what was the reason for that curbs? There's some, um, well, it does allow people to uh, be more tailored in their builds if they want to, say, um, plan for a specific research path, um, uh, like going for specific uh, timing on alteration or something like that, rather than hoping that you get some bonus and then find you've got like right. three levels in thaumaturgy or something like that. Yeah, the downside of doing this is that sometimes, like, instead, like, if you have random research, then it's possible that there's a chance you have something that's really useful. And then if it's not, then you don't. But, like, maybe you would be able to expand if you got something useful. With non random research, a lot, you can have it where it's guaranteed you're going to have nothing useful, <laughs> you know? So it's like. You're definitely yeah, not going to be able to expand turn one. So it, you I know, think it, it leans yeah. more into the um, into the balance aspect of right. uh, attorney kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it's it's additional randomness, which you know you might not want in a tournament. So anyway, that's why I think you wanted to take this out. So, uh, but there's yin and yang to it. But this is what we're doing: non-random research. Uh, I guess it's time to talk about mods. Maybe is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be the same mods we played with last year. Um, we've got Rebirth, which I think is working fine. Basically, if a pop if a place gets depopulated, it will slowly regrow population. It regrows really slowly. I think from like two or three thousand population back up, and then it regrows pretty quickly from zero population to back until it gets to like two or three thousand. And this is so that pop killer a bit more manageable. If you want to play pop kill, you are free to do so if it's not banned. Right. Uh, sadly, it normally get sadly. I like playing pop kill nations, but it normally gets banned. So if you've got the big dreams, like if Novell Novell is signed up, he's probably got big dreams for playing that pop kill nation. Sadly, it may not work out for him. Keep your eye out if Novell's in an MA game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think Airmore probably has passed into a fair number of games because I feel like it doesn't always get banned. There's just so many other things in Middle Age you really need to ban. Um, okay, we've got our thematic Jim Jin, my thematic Jim Jin, uh, and th- been a couple of tweaks to that recently, right? With the blood items, so one of the tweaks was the cheap. The cheap blood item, the one, the uh, cardiac cask, which used to give you two blood slaves, it's now cheaper. I think it was 15 slaves, now it's 10. But it only gives you one blood slave. So it's actually, in some ways, less bang for your buck. Um, but the, the change, but a lot of times you only need one blood slave. Like if you're going to be a Sabbath master or Sabbath slave, then like you only need one blood slave to do that. And so now that's cheaper. Um, the. The main reason, though, was so that it's it was a kind of a nerf to blood assassins. You can't. There are blood assassins in the game, you know, like Lady Jabissia, and the idea was they should be able to bring a blood slave in. So we'll have we'll leave an item so they can at least have one blood slave come in to them and to to assassin battles if they want. But yeah, um, two was felt to be a bit too many, and with two you can actually start abusing some things like life for life. And uh, you can send people to prison to like Claw of Kokotos or whatever, which are just some of the more like almost impossible to counter assassin things you can do. So 
that was the reason for that change. Honestly, I, I hadn't seen it get abused hardly at all, but it was more like the theoretical possibility for its abuse that we changed it. Yep. Um, and the second item, the, the one that was expensive, uh, it was also kind of like a, maybe a little too edgy in terms of lore. We, uh, we got rid of it and changed it. Uh, and now it's a summon. And the summon just carries around blood slaves with him. So um, the, the reason for that is, again, for assassin battles, right? That way you can't have like a five slaves and an assassin battle, which, you know, for a blood mage, they can do horrible things with five slaves and an assassin battle. Um, but yeah, that um, if you I forget what. I can't remember what research level it is, but anyway, you can download the mod and look at it, but I think it should be in your channel and the mods section with the latest yeah. version, I think. Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just the commander. He can't hardly do anything. He has a, enough hit points and stuff. He's going to resist most all of the like strategic nukes and things like that. But, um, he, uh, but yeah, he carries blood slaves around. So that's that. Uh, worthy heroes going to be in it like always. Improved casting AI. Uh, this actually has been updated in a pretty significant way. Um, since well, there was a change last year between the qualifiers and the finals. Where we made it where it will cast point buffs off script. The AI will if there's nothing else it can do. So it's a really low priority still. It's still going to prioritize any kind of evocations once you're off script. But it will still do it, especially if you don't have any of the evocations for that mage learned, right? Um, so like if you have an Astral One Yogi or something, and he's on advance and cast, and all you've given him to do, the only spells that are available are like Luck and Body Ethereal, then he's going to cast Luck and Body Ethereal. Um... But you yeah, know, that if, was a major. Um, I think from people coming in from other servers, that was a pretty big. Uh, I know that uh, point buffing is yeah. um, more popular for people playing with vanilla. Yeah, I mean, and you can still do all the point buff. Not all the point. You can do a lot of point buffing even before uh, this change because you get five turns to point buff. But. If you wanted to also have them do it on an advancing cast, they wouldn't with this mod. Now they will sometimes, um, and they can still. I mean, they can still do it even if you have other stuff researched. It's just they're much less likely to. Um, they're gonna ca if they're a water mage, like, yeah. If they're a water mage and they're looking, okay, could I cast quickness or could I cast frozen heart? If there's a good frozen heart target around, they're gonna do frozen heart. Um, which frozen heart's a good spell, so. Um, the, but the changes that have been made since the finals, so this was present, this change was existing um, when the finals happened. The change that's been, that was introduced after the finals is there have been a few kind of small tweaks with like some national spells that weren't, um, uh, that weren't factored in. They like the, the Zabalbin spells, they would still be spamming like some of the gift of whatever soul off script and those generally are not very good. Um, so anyway, those were added in, but the big change is that, uh, blood will now re cast reinvigoration when they get high fatigue. So, yep. Off script. Right. So that can be pretty huge. If you do it perfectly, it's not going to do it to reset communion slave fatigue. It'll only try to reset master fatigue. But if you do it perfectly, like a master in a communion can even get, fatigued out and then he'll have a slave near him and be like oh we should use this and then he'll reset the fatigue on all the slaves off script so um anyway there's a there's a lot of possibilities that open up when you can cast reinvigoration intelligently off script which you can't in vanilla the ai will never cast it i think if you i think you put it in there that they will cast off script at 80 fatigue or more right yeah, I mean, that's just what I noticed, right? It's not like I hard-coded okay. that into the game. But the game, however the engine looks at it for the AI, is the more fatigue you have, the more likely it is to want to cast the spell. And so I just tinkered with the um, the casting, like 
how much it wants to cast that spell, the, the AI mod command. And I tinkered with it until it would kind of start casting it once it was at 80 or 90 fatigue. Cool. Um, but it, it, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it won't cast it when it's 70. Um, and it will always cast it when it's 80. It's, it's not uh, quite that well honed. Maybe we can get loggy on the case. Yeah. Um, okay. And then we will, so I, I did a video on my channel recently about, uh, improved sprites, which was a mod made by Sturm and uh, this has no, this is only cosmetic. Uh, doesn't change any of the way the game plays. It just overhauls how a lot of the sprites look. Um, and I think if the vast majority of people want that in a game, we can put that in um, since it's cosmetic only. Yeah, so, it can be a little bit fun to, um, I haven't played with it myself, but I have watched other people play it. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, spicy. It, it makes it a little bit of a new playing experience but yeah. it doesn't change yeah like you said gameplay at all except for maybe i think you mentioned in your video that it can sometimes look a bit weird that you don't necessarily automatically know oh those are barbarians and i'm just going to send them in there and now i'm dead right yeah you have to pay you have to actually like read if you're a veteran player and you're used to just looking at stuff and knowing what it is then it's a different like all the sprites are different so you don't look at it anymore and just know what it is i mean it makes sense when you look at it you're like oh like if you study it but i mean veteran players they just know this sprite equals this unit right and it's really that simple for us and this shifts it so some people aren't going to want it um but if the vast majority of players eight out of 12 want it we can put it on in the game yep um cosmetic only but anyway that's something you'll get to vote on uh, anything else for the mods? Oh, I, I know we were talking about using capital recuperation because we've got that. Right. It's, uh, it's working. Uh, we had some kinks to iron out from it at the beginning, but it, we haven't used it in enough games where I feel comfortable putting it in the tournament. Really. We kind of asked some of the GMs and they're like, yeah, let's hold off on it. Yeah. We went back and forth on that, but I think we're going to leave it out for this one. Right. Maybe but, the finals? I don't know. We'll see. We'll, yeah. When we get there, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but, you know, do consider using it in games you're playing, because for next year, we'll probably have, you know, there will be a lot more games that have finished that have had it in it, and we'll have more feedback. So, um, yeah, it's it's definitely on the candidate list for future tournament games. Just we didn't decide to put it in this one. Okay, etiquette is, I guess, the last thing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so leaving, if you need to leave a game, please don't ghost, right? It's so much easier for the GMs if you tell us you're, you need to leave and sub out because we can get your password from you so we can give it to the next player. We don't have to, like, do it. We have, like, a little thing we have to do if we don't get your password that's annoying for us. So tell people if you're going to leave and we'll find you a sub. It does mess with people's games, yeah, if you just... Um ghost everybody and yeah. don't give people the password to um have us be able to put the next person in easily yeah i mean it's it's and it's always way preferable if you can play your position to the end you know like subbing is kind of a little um you know it, like it's not great when you need to sub in general or leave a game but it's way better when you let people know like we all appreciate it when you let people know when we're able to like find you a sub instead of just like pure ghosting um, and everybody who's played the game recognizes that everybody needs a sub at some point. So, you know, if you really need one, then do it. Uh, let people know. But also try to play out your position. Uh, if and you maybe can. as part of that, too, uh, going AI um, is preferable not to do that. And we have a lot of um, players specifically in Lucid's uh, server that are totally willing to sub in for a person who is about to die and do oh, yeah. a heroic last stand. I've done that before. So those are the easiest subs times. to find. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's the subs so, that are hard to find are when you're like, it's turn a hundred. I've got a great position, but I don't feel like trying to win. Those yeah, are the hard subs. Right. If you're like, I've got one army left in my capital and I, for whatever reason, I can't play it. Like that's where people are going to be like, 
All right, choose me, boss. Yeah, no skin off our back. You're already in a losing position. If you do better than lose immediately, then it feels like a win. Yeah. I mean, even just losing and killing, taking, you know, charging the pound of flesh can be a lot of fun. So just let us know um, yeah. if you are thinking of going AI and we will work with you to move yeah. that forward. Yeah, do not go. So the thing on AI is just ask the, the game master for your game. Just say, hey, I think I'm in a dying position. I've got, you know, and it's not like every position needs to be a sub. There is a time for going AI like you've expended every mate like you had a huge battle outside of your capital where you literally used every single thing you had right and you've got three turns left where you're going to log in to hit in turn while they finish sieging your last two forts like there's nothing for you to do you can go ai you know but just ask the gm first and say hey uh i'm down you know i have no armies left i have three mages and uh, I have, you know, they're just sieging my forts. Can I go AI? And they'll be like, and sure. If anybody wants a reminder of great reasons not to go AI, just I refer you back to the tourney finals and the thug divine emperor and all sorts <laughs> of random oh, craziness yeah. that was going on. Yeah. Uh, heck, I was playing Ulm and getting wrecked by Bandar repeatedly. So yeah, he Bandar, just had his capital. If if Bandar gave up and went AI the, the, when you had basically proven he wasn't going to be able to win the war and was that would have been his a cap, different game. It would have sure. been a different game for you. But he he got out his butcher's cleaver and was like, "We're gonna get put that hand on the table. You can have my cap, but I'm gonna make you pay for it." Yep. Um. Okay, slow turns. What do you what do you have to say about slow turns, Curbs? Well, basically, um, I think it was sort of what we went over a bit, um, where we don't want people to be dragging the game out for everybody. And by everybody, I mean like everybody in the tournament all the way to who will be in the finals, because um, it's it's just a kind of, like if you have life issues like that are not like. Mm -hmm long-term life issues then um it's understandable we'll give extensions we're happy to give extensions and stuff like that but if you're extending like every turn for like five turns three turns or something like in a row then we're gonna the gms are gonna take notice and um we might talk to you the, the other players are gonna notice they might complain so just be attentive um I know from my personal experience that timers can be sort of awkward if they're 24 hours and they're rolling at different times during the day because I've got a work schedule, I've got other things. Um, but just try and be attentive to um, not just your own life needs, but other people as well that yeah. are playing in the game with you. And this is one of those areas where it's not like a hard rule, you know, like, and like, I think good adminning and GMing for these games isn't like having hard rules. This is more just like norms and being polite. And generally what's polite is try not to be the same. Like, don't be the last person to do your turn every single turn. You know, like, don't be the person that hits, that say, you know, isn't going to ever finish. You're always going to leave unfinished. You know, like, if you've done your turn, just hit in turn. Right. And if you can only if you can do your turn every day at 4 p.m., get, you know, go or, you know, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., 7 p.m. comes around, do, do whatever your turn is and then hit in turn. That's, yeah. that's and uh, do a double turn if you're the last one. Too, right. Sometimes you don't have to do it yeah. every time, but if, that it, that's nice as well. Yeah. If you're the last person to go, you can. And it's that time of day where, you know it's your time to do dominions and then by all means yeah and you do a turn just turn around and do another turn and it's that's a, if you're willing to do double turns like where you just do the same turn and so you, if you're the last on the first on the if you're the last person to go on the previous turn you'll be the first on this one then you'll never be the same person always lagging the game down so yep um it's just a polite thing and this isn't just for the tournament this really is for all games just try not to be super slow but then you know everybody is slow sometimes <laughs> so there you go uh subbing we've already talked about this but 
Yeah, just as a point, we want to make sure that people um, do not feel that they have to take dominions more seriously than life. So right. there are subs, there are waiting subs, there are good players who are subs. And um, if you are really just not feeling it, if you are, if you had a change of heart and stuff like that, let us know. We'll get a sub put in your place and uh so subbing is fine right. if you feel like you're not able to commit anymore and if you just need a co-pilot you can find one of those too it can be one of your friends you can ask in general if somebody can co-pilot for you kind of like a hydra game you can do that um yep. feel free um you know anything you need to do you know temp sub whatever it is you need um you can you can do that in that arena um yeah i'm trying to think of this oh um one thing that always comes up is can i sub in a different game so like let's say you're in game three and somebody in game five needs a sub um you can't do it unless you've been eliminated from game three because we don't want to have the chance that somebody has two spots in the finals right so if as soon as that's kind of a nice thing about getting knocked out of a game is it opens you up to be a sub in another game so even if you lose in one game you'll probably have another shot to get in the finals because there will be people that are going to need to sub out that have playable positions and i'll suggest too that um we want to avoid subbing in the same game if you got eliminated then taking over for another nation you sort of have a bit of a um personal investment and uh foreknowledge of the game that can kind of screw right. what might happen you might have uh, some revenge you need to to go seek which isn't super cool to the whatever player needs revenge if they were able to actually kill you um yeah, we'll keep it cross game subs right um we reserve the right to break that rule if we need to like if we can't find a sub and the only person willing to sub was from that game we'll do it but so far we haven't needed to so hopefully yeah we can. within reason yeah all right, and then the final point is being civil. Just uh -oh. uh, don't be dicks to each other. Yeah, try to have fun. Um, if if you're getting on too much of a tear in a game thread, we'll probably ask you guys to talk about it like through in-game messages or through private Discord. And there's a chance if you're having to talk because you're pissed with somebody in a private DM, first of all, that's probably a better place than the game thread. Um. It's certainly but a better a place good... than the general uh, channel. Yeah. Um, but there's a good chance if y'all are literally like yelling at each other in private DMs, one person's going to block the other. And that's probably just the way that should be. So, but yeah, don't, don't shit up the game threads too much. Especially, like you can talk about game stuff in the game threads and you can bitch about somebody in game threads. But it's like the line between having your say and harassment, right? <laughs> yeah, there's public diplo, and then there's just being mean. Yeah, and you can be a little mean, but you can't harass, right? So the harass is the repeated thing, and you know, tch, tch, don't be too mean too. You know, if you if you have to be a little mean, that's okay. There's some meanness in dominions, but don't harass people. Salty. Yeah. Um. Okay, I think that's it. You have anything else, Kirby? That uh, seems to cover everything I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure something will come up later that I'll be like, ah, I should have talked about that. But um, I think we are pretty much ready. So summary, we need 12 more players. We'll have one more full game. And uh, today or tomorrow, keep an eye out. We will have the forums going up. All right. Well, uh, thank you for joining, Curbs, and thanks for adminning this. Yeah, good luck and have fun, everybody. All right. Don't die. Yeah.